Hello and welcome to the next episode of Aurora Forex Uncut Tutorials. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a viewer request, which was to have a look at stations, uh, their mechanics, how they work, um, as well as their uses and some of the other things that you might want to know about. So what are stations in Aurora Forex? Stations in Aurora Forex are ship designs which have the classification of no armor check. Once they have no armor check, they are immediately classified as a space station for construction purposes. What this means is that you can build them in industry, as we can see here. If we go over to our industry tab, go to space station, we can build these with our industry. This means that they don't require tooling or shipyard capacity and means you can practically build as big a space station as you want almost immediately. And the only thing that matters is your cost. Space stations can be used from anything from repairing to fuel harvesting to terraforming to orbital mining to maintenance to refuel stations. There are many different things that you can do. We're going to go through those things now. But the important thing to note before we get into that is that one, space stations cannot have weapons on them. If you want to have a space station with a weapon, it is not a space station. It's a ship with no engines that you build in a shipyard. Two, uh, commercial space stations are uh, more efficient in a lot of ways and they gain their efficiency from not needing engines, not needing armor, and not needing a bunch of other things. So I highly do recommend you use them. I'm going to explain why. So let's begin. First off, diplomacy module. I recommend using a space station with a diplomacy module because the diplomacy module works by being in view of an alien race and then having their officer or their person continue diplomatic contact. As long as it's in view of the alien race and in the same place, which it should be because you want it to be constantly viewed, then it will build up relation. You want a space station to ideally be stationary to a point where it can just sit there uh, and not worry about maintenance, not worry about anything else, which because it's a commercial vessel, it doesn't have to. And that will just build diplomacy. So that's something that you can use for a space station diplomacy module. The second thing is going to be hangars. Uh, you can't put military hangars on because it's a commercial vessel, but you can put commercial hangars and commercial hangars can then house your military vessels within the station. And if you then add, which we're going to get to, maintenance modules, maintenance modules add their capacity to a uh, population or a deep space population, and that will support a certain number of ships. So, for example, if you have eight ships within a commercial hangar and you have a maintenance module that can support those eight ships, uh, maintenance modules that support those eight ships, then you directly... Uh, can keep their maintenance clock halted and not increasing, which keeps those ships in those hangars essentially the same as what a normal hangar would do. Now, the only thing you're then missing is deployment time. And that deployment time can be affected uh, either by, uh, can be affected either by recreational modules, arc modules at a deep space population or in orbit of a planet, or colonists on the planet themselves, on the colony themselves. Once you have any population that you are next to that you're in orbit of, these says population or normal population or otherwise, then you can um, then you can uh, get recreation and maintenance. And if you want, you can use those commercial hangars in conjunction with a body that's not deep space population with maintenance facilities on that population. And what you can do is use as maintenance facilities to support those vessels within the hangars, and then there you go. You've got yourself a situation where you can keep your hangars, uh, your fighters secure, and then you can add to that station ordnance capacity, fuel capacity, and anything else you might want to need, a maintenance supplies, to keep your fighters maintained and ready to go for multiple sorties, multiple engagements as needed. The next thing we're going to talk about is arc modules. Arc modules, 500,000 tons, cost 200. They support a population, so in this case, 200,000 uh, people. They can be used like a cryogenic transport to move people around. So if you're on a massive ship, for example. But their main purpose is that you can use arc modules uh, in orbit of a body to generate a secondary population to the body. So we're going we're gonna to give an example of that. So I'm going to create uh, one of these vessels. And we're going to go over to Earth. And you're going to be able to see... Um, the different populations, so orbital population, then non-orbital population. Uh, so uh, where is that hanging out again? Uh, support population, no maximum, obviously. Uh, did I do that on the wrong one? I may have. Uh, 
Um, but there should be just an orbital population. I think it's fucked up because of the colony cost. Uh, but that there was a there was a chef put population in orbit. I think you have to use deep space population for that. I do I do forget. Um, but the point is, is you can use art modules in orbit of a population. They're very useful in that regard. Um, but yeah, uh, that's basically what art modules do. There, there'll be more on that. I'm going to get into a video more about art modules. But basically, they have, they they replace orbital modules if you know what those are, um, and they actually have a proper separate population. Though I can't seemingly find it here, uh, which I. <laughs> I may be, uh, I may be missing, uh, yeah, so species that, uh, there we go, surface population, and then if we have a look, ah, uh, they don't have any colonists, so they don't have any colonists, uh, what we can do to rectify that, to kind of show you guys, is we go to the battle fleet, we're going to go to load, uh, let's add in some cryogenic transports first, uh, oh, it wasn't the right vessel at all, was it, was it not the right vessel, oh, it was, uh, let's add in some cargo shuttle bays. Uh, let's just unlock that design. Add in some cargo shuttle bays, and then we can go over to Earth. We can load the colonists. We can then do an eight-hour increment, and if we then do that, we should then have a uh, orbital population, a non-orbital population, assuming that these guys are actually carrying. Uh, oh, they still need to load those colonists. So, I just give them some time. And then let's go on to Earth. Uh, have we managed to pick them up yet? Apparently not. We're still loading colonists, uh, which we can actually have a look on how long it's going to take. It's going to take apparently quite a bit of time, so we'll just uh, sort that. And there we go. We now should have the population displaying accordingly. So there we go. Orbital population, surface population, total population. So the orbital population grows independently. The orbital population has its own... Um, you know, growth rate, so in regards to agricultural service industries and manufacturing. Sorry about the delay there, a bit weird with how that was interacting with each other. I haven't done much art module stuff, but there we go. You can see the planetary species on the surface and all the other good stuff. So that's what art modules do. Now let's talk about uh, repair bays. Repair bays are essentially what you would imagine. Uh, they provide, if we go back over, because we have one repair bay, uh, they provide repair capacity in essentially what a repair yard is. If you have repair modules on a station, on a vessel, anything like that, and you put them in orbit of a deep space population or in orbit of a body, they act as a space station that is ship-based that can repair anything. So basically a repair yard. So in this case, we have our ship-based uh, repair yard of the Carlo Juho Stelberg 001 that has a thousand capacity because we have thousand capacity of repair and that's the biggest ship that they can repair possible so that's really advantageous if you want to repair in the field at any point especially if you've got deep space population next up auto mining modules orbital mining modules are replacements or a different version of orbital automated mining you don't need a population to man them so you lose the fifty thousand people need to man a normal mine um but you have certain limitations they are better than an automated mine in that they cost the same amount as a normal mine, so 120 quantum, but they can only mine certain bodies, and that is determined by your orbital mining diameter. If we go over here to orbital mining diameter, which is located uh, here, we currently have, uh, I believe, 250. We can go up to 320 kilometers, and that means we can only mine bodies that are in that capacity. So we couldn't mine, for example, Venus. So my recommendation, if you're considering my orbital mining modules, use them only for bodies that you can one mine, obviously, but also do not use them on bodies where there is just a high colony cost, but small, basically use them whenever you can. If you can use them, use them. If you can't use them, use automated mines for high colony cost worlds, and if you have low colony cost worlds, always use normal mines with a normal population. That is the most cost effective way, minimal wise, to mine in general uh then let's move on we got ordnance transfer system and then refueling hubs uh, so all this transfer and the refueling hub basically all these do is allow you to refuel multiple ships at once instead of one ship at the time uh you can add these to stations put these stations in orbit of somewhere and then use them as a de facto base where you can you know come in and grab them uh you know, grab uh supplies grab missiles grab fuel 
that kind of thing. Normal ships can do this, but refueling hubs are so big that generally speaking, you want to use the advantage that stations don't need to be tooled and don't need a shipyard of 100,000 tons, for example, 150,000 tons to be built. Um, and so you want to be using that. Next up is Sorium Harvester. Uh, Sorium Harvesters mine as much as your fuel production tech. They mine that much per annum. They mine directly into your fuel capacity uh, and or they harvest into your fuel capacity and they immediately turn into fuel. They do not have them. They're not distinct from the mineral of Sorium. Uh, your fuel capacity of 50,000 liters uh, or as many liters as you put on. So for example, if you had 2 million liters, it would take you know that long uh, you know, 80,000, 2 million divided by 80,000, that would have to be how long, eight, uh, based on years, it would take to harvest enough to fill your capacity. You want to put these in orbit of super jovies or gas giants, as those are the only things that fuel harvesters can mine. You cannot harvest fuel from a normal planetary body besides gas giants and super jovians. You then want a, probably a tanker to come take the fuel from them. You need a refueling cup or a fueling system and the check of tanker for you to properly set the orders up. The orders should essentially go. Refuel from tanker, which would be the fuel harvesting station, and then transfer fuel to colony, and then you put that on cycle orders uh, with your tanker that's moving the fuel back and forth. Then we have terraforming modules. These provide atmosphere terraforming uh, to the body that they're in orbit of. Um, they have a cost of 500. Uh, normal terraforming installations cost 600, though I believe the cost is being reduced. Uh, so be in mind that you might be on version 2.1 and that cost might be reduced. Um, but basically terraforming installations add this much atmosphere per year, uh, based on your technology level. They don't need a population and they're generally the recommendation. If you want to terraform, you can then make adjustments through here. Pretty self-explanatory. Now to move all of this stuff, you're going to need tractor beams. One ship can track to one other ship or station in this case with a tractor beam. You can't do more than that. The amount of engines the engine power of those engines and the size of the tug will affect and the size of the thing that's tugging will affect the speed of the tug basically if you have a tiny tug and a big vessel you're not going to get very far you need to build build big enough powerful tugs to move around your large space stations okay so always keep that in mind when you're designing them i recommend ice rangers uh, ship optimizer for this to find out i also recommend a reading on the change log i will link both of those in the description Lastly, something that I forgot to mention, and we've gone very rapid fire, very quick with, uh, with, with, with today. Um, in terms of mining modules, you will need a, either a ship to go to the colony. So you'll need a colony on the body you're mining. Fuel harvesters don't need a colony because you can't make a colony on a, a gas giant. But with mining modules, you do. You need to have a colony there. And that the stuff you harvest will go immediately into the stockpile. You, need a, you either need a cargo ship that will pick those minerals up as you mine. Or you put the cargo uh, shuttles and the cargo hold on the actual uh, orbital mining platform. Whatever you decide, that's what you should think about doing. Uh, you can also make mobile mining module platforms, all that other stuff, but that wouldn't be a natural station. All right. Now that we've kind of explained all through that, I think everyone's got a, hopefully a pretty good understanding uh, of, of what stations are. Essentially, the summary is stations are non movable commercial vessels that have no armor and can be built in industry without the need for tooling or building of a shipyard and thus benefit greatly from that ability to build large large stations that can take over installation jobs such as mining harvesting terraforming maintenance repair and more that is what a space station is to me that's what space station is generally is in the game and uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. Please like and subscribe. Consider becoming a member today. A short episode uh, for the Uncut tutorial series, but a one based specifically on space stations and what you can potentially use them for, how they work in terms of the industry and more. I'll see you guys again next time.